गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल दिस इज आकांक्षा शुक्ला फ्रॉम आई टी डिपार्टमेंट एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज रिलेटेड टू एसोसिएशन रूल माइनिंग एंड एज आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द एसोसिएशन रूल माइनिंग वॉट इज एसोसिएशन एंड वॉट आर द बेसिक रूल्स एंड विच एलगोइम इज द बेसिक और प्रोमिनेंट एलगोइम फॉर फाइंडिंग द एसोसिएशन रूल माइनिंग दैट इज एप्रियोरी एलगोइम that has already discussed in my previous uh, recording i just uh, take a overview of that algorithm that uh, basically uh, a priori algorithm is used to find the association rule and uh, and suppose if in a ba market basket analysis we have a different kinds of items and uh, the customer wants to purchase uh, the items uh, which are most frequently bought so to find out that particular items or to find out the association between these kinds of items we generally find out the association rules or we basically mine the association rules that which which items or uh, which uh, two or three frequent items can be bought together and these problems can be solved by using the association rule mining algorithms so just like a priori algorithm which i had already discussed in my previous uh, lecture and also we had solved a numerical on that topic now in this lecture i am going to discuss about the extension or improvement towards the a priori algorithm that is pcy algorithm park chain u algorithm so some drawbacks which we had find out in the a priori algorithm is that there was a problem of memory handling in a priori algorithm so whenever we are having a larger data set in main memory then a priori may not be efficient to solve that kind of problem so to solve that kind of problem or to handle that kind of larger data set in the main memory we are going to use the pcy algorithm we also say uh, that pcy algorithm just an improvement to a priori or uh, we can say just like an extension to a priori algorithm so now what is pcy algorithm this algorithm is based on hash functions or hash based improvement we can say that pcy is a hash based improvement to a priori in this algorithm during the pass one just like in a priori algorithm what we do we, we do in pass one the of uh, we do in pass one that we are um, going to solve the frequent table one then again we are going to take the frequent table two candidate table two candidate set table one two three just like that so we uh, we have seen in a priori that most of the memory is idle during pass one in a priori algorithm so the idea is can we use that idle memory and can we use the idle memory which uh, is uh, in pass one of a priori and that can reduce the memory required in pass two this question arises in our mind so use that memory to keep count of buckets into which the pair of items can be hashed just count not the pair themselves we have to only count the number of buckets that memory which is most of the memory part is idle during pass one of a priori we have to use that memory only to keep counts of the buckets in which the pair of items are going to be hashed so we are we are going to only count that one not we are going to pairing themselves that items we are not going to pair themselves we are going to we are only going to just count that number of buckets then give extra condition that candidate pair must have to satisfy on pass 2 now in pass 1 what we have the main memory there are item counts whatever the items we are having in bas market basket data analysis or market data analysis so these are the item counts and in pass 2 what we are going to do we are going to fetch the frequent items from that item counts and then count of pair of frequent items we are going to put that count of pair of frequent items also and that count of pair of frequent items is also known as candidate pairs now before pass one what we have to do we have to organize the main memory so space to count each item four byte integer per item one four byte integer per item will take then rest of the space of the memory we are going to represent 
the baskets as we can do then in pass 1 of pcy what we do in addition to the item counts just in the given diagram in additional to the at item counts in pass 1 maintain the hash table with as many buckets as fits in main memory okay so what we have to so what we have to do additionally to item counts we have to maintain a hash table with many of the buckets as fit into the memory then keep count for each of the bucket into which the pair of items are going to be hashed and for each number of bucket we have to keep count not the actual pairs that hash to the bucket we are only keep counting the buckets not the pairs of that items which are going to be hashed to that particular buckets now the hash function should be deterministic the hash function which we are going to use in this algorithm should be deterministic now the first pass for each basket what we have to do each item in the basket we have we have to add one to the item counts and for each pair of the items we are going to hash the pair the pair of items are going to be hashed to a particular buckets and then add one to the count for that bucket so this is new in the pcy in the pcy algorithm this is new that we are going to hash the pair to the bucket for each pair of item we are going to hash the pair of that items to a particular bucket and after that we are adding one to that particular count of that bucket now there are some points key points to note the pair of items need to be generated from the input file they should not present in the file and we are not just interested in the presence of a pair but we need to see whether it is present at least having support count or not so we have to perform two checks now why is the hash table useful there are some observations which shows that why hashing or hash table is useful so if a bucket contains a frequent pair of items then the bucket is surely frequent if a bucket contains a frequent item as we saw in a priori algorithm that if the superset if the superset is frequent item set then its subsets are also frequent frequent item sets just like if abc is a frequent item set just like if abc is a frequent item set then most uh, prominently ab or ac will also be the most frequent item set so here same same rule is applied here also that if a bucket contains a frequent pair then bucket is also surely a frequent so we cannot use the hash table to eliminate any member of these bucket second point is even without any frequent pair a bucket can be frequent again nothing in the bucket can be eliminated by using hash value we are not going to eliminate any value by using hash value but in the best case the count for a bucket is less than the support value s so now all the pair that are going to be hashed to this bucket can be eliminated as candidates <coughs> even if the pair consists of two frequent items so this is the case the best case is that what happens if the bucket count value is less than the minimum support value then all the pair all the pair of items which are containing in that particular bucket can be eliminated as the candidate set of pairs even if the pair consists of two frequent items or not or, or less than or two frequent items. even that also that particular uh, that particular items or pairs will be eliminated so but for a bucket with the total count less than support value none of its pair can be frequent but if a bucket having total count less than that minimum support value then none of the pair can be frequent so pair pair hash to this bucket can be eliminated as a candidate so if we are going to pairing that to bucket to the hash value then it is totally eliminated as the bucket count total bucket count is now less than the minimum support value so in pass two only the count pairs that hash to the frequent bucket will move further or will be considered as a candidate set or candidate pairs so how do we reserve the memory for pass two so replace the buckets in pass two what we have to do we have to reserve the memory so how this uh, reservation for the memory 
is performed. So, what we do? We replace the buckets by a bit vector. But there are two bit vectors, 0 or 1. 1 means the bucket count exceeds the support value S and 0 means it does not exceed the minimum support value S. And 4 byte integers are replaced by the bits. So, the bit vector requires 1 by 32 of a memory and 1 byte is equal to 8 bit that we all know. Also, decide which items are frequent and list them for the second pass also. So, we have to perform these two or three steps. Now, this is the main memory part, item counts, hash table for the pairs which is to be performed in pass 1. Then what we have to do from the item counts, we have to find out the frequent items and uh, from the hash table for the pairs, we have to find out the bit mapping and here we are having the candidate pair counting. Now, count all the pairs which are going to meet the conditions for having a for being a candidate pair and uh, both i and j should be frequent items and the pair i and j and th that hashes to a bucket number whose bit in the bit vector is 1 means if the if the if a particular pair is uh, having bit vector 1 that means this pair this pair is uh, coming under the bucket which is frequent bucket so, both these conditions are necessary for the pair to have a chance of being frequent. Both i and j should be frequent items and the pair which is hashing to a bucket number whose bit in the bit vector is 1. Then only it will be considered as a frequent bucket. So, the threshold value is given as 2. This is the transactions. These are the items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 4, 5, 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 5 and 2, 4, 5. There are total 6 transactions in the given example and uh, now we are going to have the support count here. So, 1, the support count of 1 is 1, 2, 3, 2. So, the support count of uh, 1 is 3 and uh, 2 comes uh, I think 3 times also, 2 also comes uh, 3 times 1, 2, 3. So, the support count of 2 is also 3 and the support count of 3 is 1, 2, only 2 times. So, support count is 2 only, 4. The support count of 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So, the support count of 4 is 5 and the support count of 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So, here the minimum uh, here the um, in the first step what we had performed we have only count the occurrence of the items in a particular transactions okay so minimum threshold value is given as 2 okay so eliminate uh, those items whose count is less than 2 or in that particular slide the count is given as 1 less than 1. So, here we are going to consider the value 1 as a minimum value. So, we have to eliminate those items whose count is less than 1. But in our case, no item count is less than 1. So, we are having a candidate item set having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All the items comes under the candidate item sets because none of the items are going to have a count less than 1. Now, now what we have to do? pair with their counts. Now, what uh, we are going to perform? We are going to pair the items and then counting with respect to their occurrence. So, 1 comma 2 item, are, these are the items. So, 1, 2, 3, 3 items uh, are given in particular transaction T1. So, we are having pairs 1, 2, 2, 3 and 1, 3. Okay, these 3 pairs are to be formed from these items. So, 1 comma 2. Now, we check in all the transactions how many times 1 with 2 comes. So, 1 time, 2 times, only 2 times. So, 1, 2 comes only 2 times. Next is 2, 3. So, here 2, 3 and only 1 time 2, 3 comes. So, count of 2, 3 is only 1. Then again check 1, 3. So, 1, 3 and 1, 3. 1 with 3, 
comes only one time so the occurrence is one similarly 4 5 4 5 comes 1 2 3 4 times so occurrence is 4 similarly we check for all the items with respect to their transaction and we put their count respectively okay now again check now again check since the threshold value is 2 so eliminate those pairs whose count is less than 2 okay so here threshold value is given 2 only so the pairs which are having the count less than 2 should be eliminated so count of 1 2 is 2 so this will be considered as a final pair count of 4 5 is 4 greater than 2 so it will be considered as a final pair count of 1 4 is 2 and 2 4 is 2 so these two will be also considered as a final pair so these four pairs are considered as a final pair now now then what we have to perform in step 4 we have to find the bucket numbers so we are having four final pairs 1 2 4 5 1 4 2 4 okay now we are going to perform or we are going to apply the hash function to find out the bucket numbers okay so we have to write all the four pairs whose count is greater than the support value minimum support threshold value and uh, here we are having the hash function that is i cross g mod 10 so to find out the bucket number we have to apply the hash function with respect to the given pairs so 1 2 mod 10 value comes to so, so value comes to so this is the bucket number then for pair 4 5 we are having value 0 for pair 1 4 we are having value 4 and for 2 4 we are having value 8 so the bucket numbers are 0 0 2 4 and 8 okay we can see that bucket number 2 the count is 2 the bucket number 0 the bucket the bucket number 0 that bucket number 0 is for which pair for pair 4 comma 5 and the count of 4 comma 5 is the count of 4 comma 5 the occurrence count of 4 comma 5 is 4 so we have to back forward the algorithm and then check and then check that bucket number 2 is the bucket number is 2 the bucket number 2 is for pair 1 comma 2 and the count of 1 comma 2 is 2 okay so bucket number 2 the count is 2 and the pair is 1 comma 2 the bucket number 0 back forward the algorithm the bucket number 0 is for pair 4 5 and the occurrence of 4 5 is 4 so the occurrence of count is 4 and the pair is 4 5 respectively we perform for all the bucket numbers and we put the count and respectively the pairs after that what we see here that the count of all the bucket numbers or the count for all the pairs which are which are present here all are having the threshold value or all are having the count greater than or equal to 2 only none of the pairs are representing here which yeah whose count is less than 2 so the bit vector of all these bucket numbers and all these pairs must be 1 because I had already told that there are two bit vectors 1 or 0 1 means exceeding the threshold value minimum value and 0 means if it is not exceeding that threshold value so here all the pairs are having the value or count greater than or equal to minimum threshold value that's why the value of bit vector is 1 for all the pairs and these pairs will also be considered as a candidate set or candidate pair set also so this is the final answer for the pcy algorithm when we are going to apply the pcy algorithm to any market data analysis to any market basket data then 
we perform these five steps and finally we are going to have a candidate pair set in this form now some more memory details for the buckets so bucket require a few bytes each we do not have to count the pass support values and the number of buckets must almost 1,4 minus <coughs> 1 by 2 of the number of bytes of the main memory in the second pass the table of triples is essential so the hash table must eliminate 2 by third of the candidate pairs to beat a priori algorithm with the triangular matrices for the counting values now again just like uh, pc just like uh, a priori having some uh, disadvantages just like in terms of memory values or main memory type so we introduced or we have a extension or we have an improvement to a priori in, in uh, terms of pc algorithm so here also some improvements can be done in pc algorithm and that can be performed by the multi stage algorithm so the first pass of the multi stage algorithm is just similar to the pc algorithm just like in pc what we do we have the item counts and we are having a hash table so that uh, step or that pass is same in multi stage algorithm also after that pass the frequent baskets are identified and summarized by a bitmap but what happens in the second pass of multi stage it doesn't count the candidate pairs rather it uses the available main memory it does not count the candidate pairs just like in one, just like what happens in pcy that in second pass we uh, count the candidate pairs and then find out the bucket number and then put in a table all the values and then bit vector value and then find out the candidate pair so we do not uh, perform that step in multi stage rather it uses the available main memory for another hash table and using another hash function here what we do we are having multi stages so we are having a we are having in we are going to avail the main memory for another hash table using another hash function so here what happens here two hash tables or uh, more than one hash table or hash function is going to be performed okay since the bitmap from the first hash table takes up 1 by 32 of the available main memory the second hash table has almost as many buckets as the first one also okay so in the second pass of multi stage we are again go through the file of the baskets and there is no need to count the items again since we have already those counts from the first pass so we must retain the information about which items are frequent since we do not need it on both the second and third passes during the second pass we only hash we only have to create the hash creation we have to create only this and pair of items to the buckets of the second hash table so what we have to do during the second pass we hash certain pair of items to the buckets of the second hash table okay not all the pair of items we are going to hash now a pair is hashed only if it meets two criteria for being counted in the second pass that is we hash i j if and only if i and j both are frequent and that pair and that the the item that the occurrence of the pair of both the items are hashed to a frequent but bucket on the first pass so if these two conditions met then only a pair is going to be hashed so as a resultant of this the sum of the counts in the second hash table should be significantly less than the sum of the first pass okay and after the second pass the second hash table is also summarized in the form of as a bitmap and that bitmap is stored in the main memory so these two bitmaps together takes up slightly less than 1 by 60th of the available main memory so there is still plenty of space to count the candidate pairs on the third space so mainly to handle the larger data sets in the main memory we are going to apply these kinds of algorithms okay because we can see that in the pcy if you are going to avail only 1 by 32 of the available main memory then also still plenty of space retains and uh, in multi stage also if you are going to if you are going to have two hash tables applying uh, 
different different hash functions then still plenty of space to count the candidate pair for the third pass also available okay so it might happen that even after hashing there are still too many surviving pairs and the main memory is not sufficient to hold their counts so what is the key idea behind that that after pass one of pc by rehash only those pairs that qualify for pass two of pc by using different different hash functions and in the middle pass fewer pairs are going to be contribute to the buckets so only fewer false positive or frequent buckets with no frequent pairs can be find out in the middle passes so count only those pairs which are going to satisfy these three conditions first one is both i and j should be frequent item and using using the first hash functions the pair hashes to a bucket whose bit in the first bit vector is one only and if when we are going to use the second hash function then the pair hashes to a bucket whose bit in the second bit vector is one we, one means the count must exceed or equal to the minimum threshold value so multi stage algorithms have some points just like problem false positive from the hashing can also be find out multiple rounds of hashing is there in multi stage algorithm and after pass one we are going to have a list of qualified pairs and in pass two hash only the qualified pairs of pass one and then fewer pairs hash to hashes only to the buckets so it defines the less it uh, uh, counts the less false positives means bucket with count greater than support count yet no pair of count is greater than sub minimum threshold value now in pass 3 less likely to qualify infrequent pairs repetition repeat these steps to reduce the memory and we have performed more passes also to re to to more and more utilize for the utilization of the available memory the failure is memory is less than big o f plus f so these f plus f means false positives values or some fewer pairs which are going to be hash to the buckets so this is a pictorial representation of the multi stage algorithm in pass 1 we are having a item counts and the first hash table in pass 2 we are having the frequent items from the item counts ca counts and uh, bitmap vector 1 and second hash table in pass 3 we are having frequent items bitmap 1 and also 2 and the counts of the candidate pairs okay so some important points which need to be keep in mind that is the hash functions have to be independent and we need to check both hashes on the third pass when we are going to perform third pass in P in multi stage algorithm then we need to check both the hashes on the third pass so if not then we would wing up counting the pairs of the frequent items which are going to be hashed first to an infrequent bucket and but happen to hash second to a frequent bu bucket so these kind of problems can be arises if we had not performed the check on both the hashes in the third pass so the example of multi stage pc by algorithm is there items are a b c d e transactions total transaction is 8 and support value is 3 so here a b c d e these are the item sets the support value is 55264 support value is nothing only the occurrence frequency of occurrence of that particular item sets in the given transaction list so we can easily see that a a comes 1 2 3 4 5 times so the support is 5 b comes 1 2 3 4 5 times so occurrence is Our support is five. C comes two times, so two. D comes two, three, four, five, six times. E comes one, two, three, four, four times. So this is the simply. This is the support values of the items. Okay, now minimum support is three. So we eliminate this one because the minimum value support value is three. so we have to eliminate that item whose support count is less than 3 so we are only having these four item sets now again we are having these pairs again we count the support and then again we see that 2 2 2 so we eliminate these 
three pairs and we have only three pairs whose support count is less than three or equal to three. Then we are having three or four means we are we are going to have the pairs rest of the pairs which are go, which are which can be formed using these item sets. So, these three pairs can be formed using these item sets, but none of the pair is having the support value less le, greater than 3 or equal to 3. So, these pairs only need to be considered, ok. These three, these three pairs need to be considered and these will be eliminated as per given rule or formula which I had noticed in my algorithm when I am when I was discussing this algorithm that buckets with the count greater than s yet no pair of count greater than s ok. Means a a d a d comes in this pair also, but when b comes in the middle then that support count is 2 only and a d has support count 4. So, this line means this ok. So, this is the basic application of a PCY and multi stage algorithm in respect to the market basket analysis, the market basket data. Okay. Some more algorithms need to be discussed for handling the larger data set in the main memory. So, it will be discussed in next lecture. That is all for today. Thank you.